Okay. I'm live. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Um, I feel like I should always start these with some kind of, uh, you know, it's been X many days since my last confession, except there are two problems with that. One is I'm not Catholic and I don't really know what you're meant to say. Something about like, forgive me, Father, for I've sinned. Um, <laughs> I know that from the movies. Um, and the other thing is I can never remember how many days it's been <laughs> since I last did this. Um, part of it is because I get confused between Neighbours and Home and Away. But the other part of it is just like, I don't know what day of the week it is ever. So, um, hi, it's been seven days since my last confession. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I titled this just now, um, he had me at Duck Hunt. So maybe that's where I'll start. Uh, no, I'll circle back to that. Let's let's leave that loop open and we'll come back to it. Um, so I was getting ready to do this and I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. I have actually forgotten to put mascara on. <laughs> anyway, um, you know how like you can go, go, go. Like you, you load up on caffeine first thing in the morning and coffee and you're like this fucking like animated machine and you could do anything and you believe that you can do anything and you set about doing anything and you know in the back of your mind at some point the steam's going to run out or your luck's going to run out or your adrenals are going to run out or the, the caffeine in your system is going to deplete and and just thwack you right oh john hi 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 alan <laughs> oh, it was friday <laughs> okay right but that doesn't tell me how many days since my last one but that's cool um hi david good to see you awesome so um where was i going with this right so i i had my shower and i was like oh i still have energy i can do this i should do this because part of my thinking here is tomorrow night so seth mcfarlane who actually shall henceforth now be known as puppy so little story behind that um, my, uh, I'd written some comment, ridiculous comment on, on one of his Instagram posts, which got like over a hundred likes. And, uh, so some of the girls came over to my profile to see like, who's this crazy woman saying these things. Um, and one of them saw the French press, you know, I tweet about coffee a little bit. Um, so, uh, she was like, oh, girl after my own heart, yada, yada. And she says, oh, we've got coffee and puppy in, um, in common so uh he, he's henceforth ever going to be known as puppy and i think that simplifies things because otherwise you know you put that name out there too many times or you say your name three times and it appears you you gotta be careful with this voodoo shit so not that i'm doing voodoo oh my god so <laughs> this is another thing you gotta be really careful what you say on the internet because like people take you literally like seriously and literally even when you're doing jokes and comedy it's like i i don't get that but anyway to clarify i am neither doing a confession nor am i doing voodoo okay let's just get that clear um so yeah he's got this uh performance like a jam session uh, that he's doing tomorrow night so I'm like oh well there's another kind of kick in the ass to, to get this done tonight um, and I think um, I think I've got some technology sorted as well so I'm going to try and do like a piano session tonight and I can link up my daisy chain whatnot uh, headphones and recording thing and I think I've got some software on my computer which means that I can stream, stream it directly into Patreon fingers crossed if it doesn't work it doesn't work and I'll let you know but um, I think that's going to be really cool I just need to find a way to put my laptop on the piano without it falling off but we'll cross that bridge um, so yeah the 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 puppy uh, performance that is happening tomorrow night um I, I suspect I'm probably going to sit there and if I last more than like three minutes, uh, I think my, my, my goal is to kind of get my inner magician online and transmute the jealousy into inspiration. Because so far that strategy has been working really well. Like it's, it's been a real kind of rocket at my backside to, to do stuff, you know, like the, the composition, seriously. Oh, and oh my God, so many things. Um, so uh, the other thing is that I um, 
I, I went for a premium thing on YouTube, you know, to take the ads out because I'd started, I found, like after that convoluted uh, conversation with my sister where she kind of blew my mind about like scales and um, composition and all that kind of thing. And I was like, oh my God, I'm never going to be able to do this. I'm like, well, come on, like hundreds of thousands of people throughout history have managed to master it. And today we have YouTube. So I searched on YouTube for all of these scales and stuff that she talked about and um, and chords and chord progressions and cre- composite. Anyway, there is so much on there. And like some of it's kind of like hardcore. You've got to really use your focus. Um, so like I'm using my focused attention between like doing the animations, which I'll come back to, versus like learning about uh, composition and all of these other technical things that I never knew about. Because, you know, when you play an instrument, you just have to learn how to play it. And it's like learning how to drive the car. That's all you have to do. But like, there's a shitload of other stuff that goes into it. And so after like two of these chord progression things, my brain was melting. And that night I was playing, um, was it List? Might have been List. No, I think I think it was um, some Chopin, like the Chopin piece. I um, can't remember what it was called. But anyway, and like, I was, yeah, because I was learning the, the chords really slowly. And oh my god some of them are just so beautiful it's amazing and it's like you have this extra several layers of appreciation when you realize what goes on underneath the hood and I'm like wow so there's a reason that people go on about Chopin it's not just because it sounds delightful when you're sitting there with Spotify and you can listen to any number of things while you're doing something else it's because it's actually fucking masterful and it's just brilliant. I, I am inspired, inspired. So, um, yes, this is this is what's going on. Um, I've, I have notes. I have this is, this is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at my notes. Um, so, yes, there was that. Except I got out of the shower and I was like, oh my god, I'm so tired. And we used to have this thing. So I think I've told you that we that my sibs and I used to go horse riding with my father and uh we did this for years and years and years and we used to go on like vacations around England and actually Alan you'll know uh Northumberland so it used to be a game that we'd play to see who could get over the border and like who got to go over the border in in the pack and all that kind of thing because Northumberland is so far north in England that it that, that it's like right on the Scottish border so you could be in one field in England and in another field in Scotland. So that was our game that we used to play. And we used to like take hip flasks and stuff as well. I know, totally irresponsible, but it was England. And like, if you got a, an injury that didn't kill you, like they'd take care of you and you'd be fixed and you wouldn't like, your life wouldn't be over. Um, so <laughs> we took these risks anyway. And plus there's another thing, like if you, um, if you fall and you're a little bit like tipsy, uh, you're, you're less likely to tense up and you're less likely to do yourself an injury. Um, as long as you don't get under the horse's feet. So that's another consideration. Anyway, we would get back after these rides and we'd be shattered and we'd sit in the pub for a little bit or we'd sit at home and my mum would make like, um, cheese on toast or toasties and and stuff until like we've had enough and eventually when we could like stiffly get up and move and like when we'd thawed out or whatever we we would each like go and take turns in 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 the shower and um my father always used to come out and he'd say oh I'm exhausted now I can't do anything and we'd have these great plans like we'd be we'd be sitting around like talking and drinking and drink rehydrating with tea and stuff because you don't rehydrate with water in England you rehydrate with tea and um and we'd have these plans about what we were going to do that night so oh we should try out such and such a place or this place or that place or whatever and um and then he'd come out and like he'd call everything off because he was just too tired. And we used to say that it was a combination of the wine and the whiskey. But like as I'm getting older, <laughs> perhaps, it's like, yeah, a shower really does. It's, it's not refreshing. It's not reviving. It fucking takes it out of you and lays you out. So um, that's a little bit how I've, I've been like the last 20 minutes. I'm going, oh, come on, get your shit together. Get up there. So anyway, I'm feeling better now that I'm talking to you all and, um, you know, we've, we've got a conversation going. 
<laughs> she says. <laughs> Feel free to chat me, by the way, guys. I know it might be difficult if you're on your phone rather than your computer, but um, yeah. So anyway, that's that. Uh, what else have I got on my list? Oh, let me tell you about Duck Hunt. Okay, so for those of you, I think you guys are mostly older than me, um, but for anyone who's who's roughly my age, um, our first experience of computers was the Super Nintendo and it was uh, Duck Hunt and Super Mario Brothers, like the original Super Mario Brothers. Oh my God, it's so nostalgic to even think about it. So I've been listening to um, Snowden's... Uh, book which I, I hadn't realized that he'd actually written one himself I'd read the one that was written by the journalist who who did the deed who who um uh, brought, brought the files to light and stuff um so that was an interesting perspective and an interesting take on the story but this is way better um so this is him in his own words and uh he he starts off uh like for the first few hours well most of it actually so far I'm, I'm probably about a quarter of the way through a third of the way through um and he's talking about his early life and taking computers apart and all this kind of thing. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm resonating with this so much. So much. And then he talks about Duck Hunt and Super Mario Brothers. And I'm like, shit, this is so closely aligned to, to my experience of growing up. It's unreal. And then school and all this kind of thing and like our views on, on um, formal education. So I'm finally starting to feel like I'm a member of my own cohort because um like technically so i was born in 83 so technically we're not millennials but we get lumped in with the millennials and technically we're right at the end of gen x so we're like kind of the in between year group almost um so it's really difficult to to resonate with either one of those those groups and i know like stereotyping and you know it's it's a very general thing but like i've never felt like i was ever part of my age group and for the first time like in forever i've actually felt like i'm my age group now so this is kind of cool um so yeah, a, a lot of it is is resonating. Apart from like the uh, the spy stuff, that doesn't resonate. But it's it's great. It's like uh, listening to a James Bond movie unfold like in 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 real time, uh, you know, in in time as if because he like talks you through the whole kind of timeline of, of everything. It's genius. It's really cool. And um, I listened to an interview that he did um, with Joe Rogan. Uh, who normally I don't quite, I don't really like him. He says a lot of things that are just wrong, like not just opinions, but just things that he's plucked out of thin air. And it's like, no, dude, like crack a book. Anyway, um, <laughs> I say that quietly as if like, oh, he's not going to hear because it's on YouTube and no one's going to say, no one's going to show <laughs> if, say, if I say it quietly. Oh God, dumb bitch. Anyway, so um, yeah, it's really, uh, really insightful he said so Snowden said some really smart things in that interview um he's obviously obviously he's had time to think about a lot of stuff um and it's just great to to hear someone that, that can dismantle like a lot of the issues and the points of contention and the stuff like because because so much of the discussion gets polarized and it gets people talk about completely different things in the same conversation like you're, you're talking about one thing and they'll go yeah but this and they're going like a, a complete tangent to what you're actually talking about because they're slipping into like their their take on something that's like low resolution like it, 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 it's it's they want to talk about something that they always talk about or that has uh is something that they've heard or something that is relevant. I'm not explaining it well. Um, they want it to fit into their schema that already exists rather than exploring an idea based on its own merits. And that bugs me because it's a fucking waste of time. Because like, if they're saying it generally, it's the same thing that a million people have said on podcasts, news, um, con general conversations, Twitter, Twitter now, <laughs> now that I'm part of that, um, and so it's like, well, why don't you, why not just explore the either take on something new or explore the idea on the merits of the idea and the concept, 
um, rather than bringing so much baggage to it that just contorts it and and kind of slips it into like the ginnel, you know, like when you're playing um, bowling and the ball goes off into the, the gutter. That's how a lot of conversations go. Um, so anyway, I think Snowden did a really good job of keeping it on the bowling alley and you know, I, I would say he got a strike uh, go, going through this conversation. So um, check it out. It's it's all over the place. I mean, this is a good thing about Rogan. He's got distribution. So it's on uh, Spotify and YouTube. Um, oh, and if you have the premium of YouTube, you could watch it with it playing in the background. I remember seeing a meme like months ago when I first started using uh, YouTube to watch, uh, you know, uh, material and whatnot. And um, they were like, oh, uh, Musk is putting uh, satellites into orbit and this and that, and we're going to Mars. And all I want is for YouTube to carry on playing in the background when I, you and I uh, lock my phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's a fair ask. Anyway, you get that with premium. Um, so not that I'm advertising YouTube, but we are on YouTube. Anyway, I'm just saying it's made my life a whole lot better having this this premium trial thing. So I think I'm going to continue with it. So anyway, that's that. What else have I got on my list? Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Do you guys have anything that you want to talk about while we're here? Um the other good thing about the YouTube thing was that, that, that the ads don't stop you like midway through learning something. So you've got this whole kind of interruption and distraction thing that's removed, which is great. And and I'm just I'm just marveling at like how much there is. It's like you can almost do away with formal education. I find it so cute. So University of Yale and Princeton and MIT, they're all doing these fucking ads that are saying, oh, come study with us and la, la, la. We've got the latest AI um, courses and data science. I don't know whether it's because I was searching data science or because data science has suddenly become like topical because of like the lack of understanding of data. Um, but uh, and, and actually, this is something that we, we've uh, bitched about in our Q&A calls because uh, it's 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 atrocious how little people understand about um, information and, and interpreting information. Um, so I can't. I, I don't know whether this is just a thing that they're putting out generally, but um, it's so cute because you know you can go on almost any subject and find whole courses, swaths of information, you know, in the form of books that you can get it to the touch of a button or uh, stuff on YouTube, like even what was the singing. So I needed some um, singing exercises like to, to try and increase my range, uh, which I found from like the watching the Christina Aguilera um, masterclass, which is great. And and then this is my point, like in back in the day, you used to have to go and like enroll in a course or piano lessons or singing lessons or whatever. And now you, you don't, you, you, you've just got this here. And, you know, so, so this, this guy is teaching like how to do the runs and the, the, the kind of, uh, all, all these like t technical things that you, you wouldn't even know existed. Um, so I don't know. I'm I'm just I am continually blown away at how easy it is to get access to information uh for the betterment of humankind and and individuals. Um so yeah, uh my TBR file <laughs> is just uh growing exponentially geometrically. So yeah, I'm screwed. Cool. So what's the plan? The plan is oh I'm glad I looked over here because this was something I wanted to show you. I actually, I went to, I had to change my shirt deliberately because I wanted to show you this. And the problem with it is, and I, I realized this when I started wearing shirts to poker, because um, they're they're a little bit more conservative than they're they're like an older kind of cohort, and um, they're like. Ellie, you realize that you're showing us your boobs every time you show us your t-shirts. So I'm like, oh yeah, good point. So. Um, Rick and Morty, Rick and Morty, another inspiration for right for drawing cartoons and animations. So this was the T-shirt I was wearing earlier, and I took it off so that I could show it to you. 
So this is Morty. You might have seen this. This is Morty having an existential crisis. So nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's going to die. Come watch TV. <laughs> and I don't know. I thought this was awesome. Um, this is one of my many Rick and Morty t-shirts. Um, so that, that's the equivalent of me wearing a t-shirt to show you <laughs> uh, while we're doing this chat. Um, so yes, uh, what else? What else? Um, the animation. Oh, OK. So I'm having to work at 24 pr frames per second, um, which means the three seconds of work is like 75 frames thereabouts, uh, 73, 72, 72 frames. So it's a lot. And like you've got to either copy paste and doctor them and all this kind of thing. I'm getting a little bit faster because I'm getting the rhythm of it and the hang of it. And um, I'm not like messing myself up as much, but it still takes forever. Um, so I was saying on the other channel, home and away <laughs> equivalent, uh, that I think what I'll probably end up doing is animate the intros to these series and then do the others like radio plays. So then I can just record the... I thought the audio was a pain in the ass to do. Um, no, audio's a breeze in comparison, even with the accents and even with the clipping and the cutting and the pickups and the squishing stuff together and all the messing around that needs to happen. Uh, audio is still quicker than animation. I don't know how people do animation. Oh, and that was another thing that I was figuring out. It's like, oh, I watched maybe two videos, two, well, one and a half videos on like basics of animation. And all of a sudden I'm doing it. Well, okay, it's not gonna be great. It's not gonna be like polished or beautiful or whatever, right? We know that, we accept that. Um, but you know, people could have gone to university for three years to do that or to have the confidence to just get on and do it. Oh, technology also is our friend. So these apps, they practically do it for you. And like, you can't even draw something wrong because you can draw over it and paint over it. And like, you can zoom in and get it exactly the way that you want it. So we are so spoiled. It is unreal. Um, I, I just, I don't know. I can't. I can't get over how much stuff we have at our fingertips to, to do all of these things. It's it's unreal. Um, that said, it's still a fucking pain in the ass. I, it's still taking me forever. Um, I, th I think things are speeding up. Uh, I got one more big chunk of talking that needs to be lips lips sunk. Um, so it might you know, it might take me another week, even if I do kind of push it. You know, I'm sitting and doing stuff for four hours at a time. My hips hurt when I stand up because I'm crossing my legs. And it doesn't seem to matter where... Well, it, it helps when I sit at the desk. Uh, but the desk, it just feels like work. Um, so I'll either sit up here and do it or I'll sit on the sofa and cross my legs but you need to cross your legs to have something like to lean the ipad on even if you've got a book to lean it on it's first world problems i know i know it's inane isn't it it's ridiculous the kind of things that we complain about um but i do think that i've started wearing my um you know the posture things braces that you can get to kind of like keep your back straight and stuff um never used to worry me about writing um but I think there is a tendency to kind of like let your posture slip and um, have all kinds of problems. So, so like the longer you do this, I mean, you guys know from sitting at a computer, like if you forget where you are, which is perfectly, you know, normal, and you'll sit for five hours without moving and doing your thing or, you know, drawing or whatever. I, I used to get this back in England before I was nomadic I'd sit at the same desk and um, my hands would be so cold and I'd forget what temperature the house was in um, and my I was finding it hard to type and that was what was like pulling me out of it and going oh my god like the heating hasn't been on and it's like minus five outside it's no wonder my fingers won't work um, but there's no real connection to like actually feeling your body and feeling what's going on. Um, and that's a little bit about what I'm worried about with like drawing on the iPad and being so intently focused on it because, you know, four hours will go past and I'm like, where did the day go? Like, 
it, it feels a little bit tiny wimey, you know, like Doctor Who, which is kind of kind of cool because after having been through these last two or three years with the adrenal failure and like not being able to do anything, it's actually a bit of a relief to like finally have that motivation back. In fact, I was thinking today, you know, we were talking about coffee earlier, the the earlier earlier, not the first earlier. <laughs> I'm I'm joking because we I talk about coffee a lot these days. Um, but it's like my brain is starting to work again. Um, and it feels like something out of, you know, limitless where and I swear I haven't got anything like speed in these concoctions. Promise you. Um I'm looking over there because I can see on the counter I've got a uh, golden ratio, which I've told you about before, and the Chimera, which has got G- GB, I don't know, I don't even want to say it in case I say the wrong thing and <laughs> yeah, shut down. Um, but it's, yeah, they have like extra things in them to help your neurons connect and everything. Um, and even the, that thing about like uh, figuring out the, the insight stuff, you know, like how you have flow where, so flow is like a four part cycle. And um, they, they've studied this intensely, um, intensely uh, to, to figure out what it is that, that allows a human being to operate at peak performance. And, you know, things like stakes and being under physical duress and adrenaline and those kind of things are performance enhancers, but there are other factors as well. And part of the cycle is, and forgive me if you already know this, because uh, there, there are couple of books like uh, superhuman or something or dave asprey stuff i don't know anyway um there are i'm I'm sure it's four parts of the cycle the first part is like the hard slog where you're like struggling and you're you're gathering data and information and you're putting it all together and like the second part of the cycle is you're starting to assimilate it and make connections and then the third state is where you're in flow and the fourth state is where you crash and you're in recovery and (laughs) <laughs> so I know that I'm somewhere in stage two or three right now and that the crash and recovery is going to come. Um, I just hope it's not. I'm, I just have to be careful. It's not the full on adrenal crash. So it's not a physical one. It's more of a psychological one. Oh, but I was watching um, a video. So I don't know whether you you guys won't know. Um, About three years ago, before I started writing sci-fi, I I did this conference. I think I've told you about the conference before. So there was the Virtually Everything story, and then there was the Storytelling for Social Profit. Um, And they were about, I don't know, nine months apart or something. And uh, we interviewed Will Smith on the first one and uh, we talked about story. So most people will talk to him about, you know, being famous and being an actor and his latest movie and uh, does he have a crush on Margot Robbie and all this kind of shit. Um, He did mention Margot Robbie in this. Um, But anyway, I was watching it last night because we were doing some editing because we might like republish it for for you guys. Um, And like some of the things that he said were just so insightful. It's, it's unreal. The guy is really smart. And um, uh, what did he say? It was it was like the exact thing that I needed to hear at that time, and it was about stay inspired. The most important thing is that you stay inspired. So if some if you reached a dead end with something, like stop, put it down, and then come back with to it. And he was talking about um, oh, which movie was it? One of the movies. It, it was like ten years in the making or something, and you'll see it when I post it. Um, but he said the most important thing is to stay inspired. And I'm like, fuck, yeah, that makes so much sense. And I feel like this whole project, and for, for those who are on the email list, you'll, you'll have seen me talk about how um, it's been really important to to breathe in as well as breathe out. So, like, to take in the information as well as, uh, like, produce. And so I'm, I'm really mindful of that. And, like, he, he kind of verbalized it in a way that I was experiencing like at that time, like yesterday. And um, I'm just like, damn, you know, like you always get, you always get the right message at the right time if you're listening. 
and I guess that was just one of those moments um so yeah I think I think if the maxim that thing that we hold ourselves to is to stay inspired and it's not about the hard work the problem with writing and the problem that I can see with animation is that it becomes about production and uh churn and um producing so you become a uh you know like in the um oh help me out with the words here in the industrial revolution it all became about you know productivity productivity and not inspiration and that's like you need a part a certain amount of that for the craft and to apply yourself to the craft and to to get the product out and get things down but um but writing, like once you've, so, so there are different ways of, of, of writing, as you may know, like one, one is pantsing, like just writing the story and letting it evolve as it goes. Um, and the other one is planning it all out so that you can get all of these kind of uh, nuances and layers and various things going on. And a lot of pulp is, is unplanned and it's just pantsing. And that's fine. It's it it it's you know horses for courses, um, but when you're doing things like thrillers and uh, crime and detective stuff and uh, anything with uh, complexity and nuance, you you really do need to have some idea of where it's going. And so I will do a lot of work in this upfront process in in like stacking all of these different layers and the philosophies and the themes and the two different things: theme and philosophy are two different things, and the character dynamics and. Uh, opposition blah 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 so um why was I telling you this oh right so that's the kind of creative inspirational part and once you've got that and so you may be 10,000 words worth of framework done for an 80,000 word novel novel and then when you start to actually like sit down to write the scenes you take one little piece and you write that scene and that's the churn. And that's where people, you'll, you'll hear them t- talking about doing 20 minute sprints and stuff, which is great. And, but that turns into like, that's the hard work of writing. And I can see that with the animation, like the lip syncing and all this bullshit is the hard work of producing a cartoon. So, and when all I want to do is sit and like come up with concepts and ideas and like build the ideas up like I want the hard work to be the the building of the ideas and the layering and texturing of the jokes and the comedy and all this kind of thing um so I think I'll uh, as I say I'll do a few of the animations get to grips with the process um if there's a way of outsourcing that at a later date or somehow automating some of it I'll, I'll look into that. Uh, in fact, <laughs> Brittany's already looking into some of it for me. <laughs> um, but the the joy, the fun. You remember I said that I was starting to do that. Um, I'm going to make myself laugh three times a day. So I came up with another concept actually in the shower. So when people say that they have these shower ideas, they're not always in the shower. This was actually in the shower and I was laughing so hard. I nearly slipped and it was echoing. And it's like, oh, I didn't realize it echoed so much in the bathroom because I don't sing in the shower here at least because I I just, I don't know. I I grew out of it or I forgot or whatever. But it was echoing so bad and that amused me as well. But uh, just putting together this one and... I want to tell you so bad, but it was like, no, I should shut up and work on it. Um, but anyway, it had me laughing so badly that I had to stumble out of the shower and I was still laughing. I laughed like three or four times trying to get it all down and it's like new stuff was flying in. And that is the best thing about writing anything, about creating, about creating it's like being on the piano and hearing that 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 amazing, beautiful sequence of chords. And it's about these ideas coming in that are so awesome that they they make your brain flip. You know, they make the Oh, what's it called? It's like if you hit hook your brain up to um is it an EEG? The um 
there's a there's a sharp it's like when you get a joke there's a there's a like a sharp like spike and uh, negative spike as you flip and you get the insight the awareness that goes with like putting these concepts together and that's the aha it's the aha of learning I, I guess that's why I love learning as well it's the aha of like stuff coming together I remember a time when I had an aha um it was before an exam I was studying my ass off but I was so tired and I laid down so we had like we have this massive lecture theater in physics so I was in the Blackett laboratory in uh in London in Imperial and we had this little study room down the side of the theater the one of the lecture halls um so I was in there with Lizzie and a few of my other friends and they were all sitting like studying and cramming and like trying really hard. And I was just so bad. I was like, I am so fucking done. And I just lay down on the floor and then I slipped under the de- under one of the tables so that like, cause it was actually used as a thoroughfare. So anyone coming through the door could just kind of blast through and like walk over me. Um, wouldn't be the first time I've been walked all over, must say. Um, but I didn't want that. So I slipped underneath the desk. So there I was under a table down the side of the lecture theater um closing my eyes for five minutes and suddenly some of the stuff made sense and you know how like you've got sine and cosine that are like 90 degrees separated it was something to do with that that got me and I sat up banged my head and I was like Jesus and they're like oh my god what's going on with you and it's like I've just understood why they're 90 degrees separated and it's like I think I had like I'd memorized like one of the formulae or something and it was just in that moment where it all came together it was bad that it happened to be at that moment when I was under a desk and it wasn't but I was so excited it was insane and then I think, you know, 20 minutes later, I was sitting in an exam hall with a headache um, and probably a mild concussion, but I survived it. I got through and I'm still here to tell the tale. Oh, my God. Anyway, concussions. That's another thing that we will talk about because I have some funny stories about concussions. Um, but I'll say those for another day. All right, folks. Well, look, lovely to see you here and to to be able to shoot the breeze. And sh- have I been talking that long? Sorry. I, I thought. <laughs> well, I guess you could like turn off at any point. I mean, it's not like you're going to just type in the chats and say, shut up, Ellie. You, you could, you, you're more likely to just click off. But anyway, thank you for being here. And thank you for chatting and listening and all that kind of thing. Um, Patreon folks, I will, uh, I'm going to fiddle with this setup and uh, see if I can, I feel like playing the piano now. So I'll, I'll see if I can do it. If, if I can't, I'll, I'll pop a note in the Patreon thing. So at least you know, and you're not waiting around for it. Um, and um, I guess we'll probably reconvene on this and the new adventures next week. Um, oh, and as soon as this animation is done, I swear to you, I will be the, 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 person most thrilled to get it up and done and uh i will be shouting it from from the roost rooftops uh so <laughs> as soon as that's ready uh i'll let you know um but and and you know with a bit of luck hopefully it's before the next time we speak so we can talk about something other than how uh tedious animation is but if not you know such is life there are worse problems in the world all right folks lovely to see you thank you for being here talk to you soon ciao